Peace and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Light and coming back again with some more spiritual vittles. And today I'm going in on altar oil. Ooh, this is a good one, family. This is a good one. Altar oil. Ooh. I'm telling you, family, this is a banger right here. Because a lot of people aren't hip and don't know about altar oil. They just don't even know about it. They're not even aware of it. They're not even aware of altar oil and how magical it is. Me personally, I always use virgin olive oil. I always use virgin olive oil. It's something about the name virgin olive oil. You can use regular olive oil. But me personally, I use virgin olive oil. I don't know why. I just love it. But what I do, I get a bottle like this. Um, you can put some herbs in there depending on what you want to do. Depending on what you want to do, but the base is always olive oil for me. I get a little bottle like this, an airtight bottle. It's like a little bitty glass mason jar. Air ain't getting in here. Air ain't getting in here. But I fill it up with olive oil, and I got some magical things in here, some other oils that I've created, some herbs, and other things that I got on here to make my altar oil. But what I do with the altar oil is where the magic starts. The first thing I do is say at least 7 to 21 anabacores on top of my altar oil. I say anabacore, get you like you mean, God, to tear, tizzara, kabera, not am chasak, manu, tahar, no, no, ra, nagi, board, don't share, you could take a cup of a shaman, bakam, tachum, rakam, el, tazika, taker, tami, gamlin, chasin, kadosh, barab, tufka, na hell, at a taker, yaki, ge, eh, lem, chapanez, or crack, a douche, taker, shivata, no, kabel, ushman, tazagata, no, you're dead to alamut, I say at least 7 to 21 of those miracle prayers because what happens is you reconstruct this oil on a molecular level. I'm infusing love, light, and all the millions of people since this prayer has been out. I've tethered my consciousness with them and I'm able to pull from that escrow of winning energy and infuse it in my oil. That's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. And what I do with the altar oil is where the magic starts. I open the cap a little bit, and I just take a little bit of it, just a little bit. I anoint my head, and then depending on which deity I'm working with, I anoint their head as well. So I'm a martial artist. I'm an author. I'm a bunch of things. So if I want to do some writing in my book, my next book, Dissolving Your Limitations, it should be out pretty soon. I have a Tahuti on my altar. I anoint my head with the oil and I anoint Tahuti's head before I start working, before I start writing. And what I'm doing is tethering my consciousness with Tahuti. If I'm a martial artist, if I wanted to go spar or anything like that, I would pick Ogun and I will anoint my head with the altar oil and I will anoint Tahuti's, excuse me, Ogun's head with the altar oil. And I will ask if I can f infuse my consciousness with his. Just as simple. If I'm doing some magic, I'll reach out to Oshun. I will anoint my head, anoint Oshun's head, and ask for her guidance. It's just as simple as that. One thing about deities is this, family. I don't want you to think that these deities are outside of you. You're drawn to the deities on your altar because they're different aspects of who you are. They're higher versions of yourself. And you can be more than one deity now, family. You don't have to be like, I only rock with Shango. If you want to, that's fine. I'd rather you rock with one deity than have 40 deities and don't have any connection with any of them. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you have 20 deities on your ancestor altar and you're feeling the connection with all 20 of them, you're winning. You're winning. It's just as simple as that. I do implore everyone, get one deity at a time, though. Get one deity establish a connection with them for at least 30 days and then if you want to get another deity up there put another deity on your altar it's just as simple as that another thing you can do with altar oil is this you can get a, a shaving of a crystal and put a crystal in there depending on what you're doing if you want to create you some meditating altar oil or meditating oil you don't have to put it on your altar you can get an amethyst crystal and chunk a piece off of it Put into your oil, and that could be your med med um, meditation oil. You know, if you want to have, I, I use it. I use Motivite and oil, and I got healing oil. I use the alien consciousness within the Motivite.
to heal people. My mom, she has bad knees. I take that motivite oil, I rub it on her knees, and I do I go to work on her, and she always feels better when I'm done. You can make any type of spiritual oil that you choose. The only limits are the limitations you place on yourself. I don't want you to be like Chris and Light said, make this oil. Make whatever type of oil you want to make. I don't care if you want to, you about to cook dinner for your boo, get you some boo dinner cooking oil. Before you cook dinner for your boo, put some herbs and spices in your oil, rub your hands down, and then start cooking for your boo. That's what magic is. You don't create the magic, the magic's all around us. But you have to be conscious and aware of the magic in order to use the magic. The biggest thing, the biggest power within magic is the power within you using it. That's it. And you can create your own. You know, when you create your own tailor-made spell, it's going to work for you because you made it. If you tell a million other people around it, the reserve from which the power of that magic came from depletes and it might not work as good. So there's nothing wrong in the beginning getting books on magic and, and trying some light, some light magic. If you want to, but the ultimate goal is for you to usurp your divine primordial power and be the powerhouse that you came here to be. It's just as simple as that, family. So this video is about altar oil or whatever type of healing spiritual oil that you want to make. It's real simple and it's real easy. I made this video because creating altar oil is something that's simple. Now, there may be something within you that's going to prevent you from doing it. You have to really challenge yourself to start doing magic. You know, not that abracadabra pulling rats out of rabbits out of the habit, out of the hat, but real magic. And the more you do, the stronger you'll get and the better you'll get. You'll just doors of opportunity will just start opening up for you. But you have to believe in yourself. Don't allow the demonium to coerce you into not being the winner that you came here to be. There's a frequency that's blowing all over our earthly domain that's preventing people from being who they came here to be. Don't be one of those people that have to get reincarnated and to get the lesson. Now that you're aware of this, start using it now. It's not guaranteed that you're going to get these Jews the next time you reincarnate. So on that note, family, peace and love. Get you some altar oil. We out here winning with this oil family. You make it. You learn the prayers. Don't read the prayer, Anna McCoy. Memorize the prayer. Don't be like, Anna McCoy, get you like, you mean, learn the prayer. And when you learn the prayer, the first thing I want you to do is make you some altar oil. And I want to hear some um, feedback on how you're winning after you make you some. I may start selling my own altar oil. I've been making this for so long now. My wife got me hip to this altar oil. I may start selling my own altar oil. And to you guys, if you guys want some altar oil, let me know. I go out and buy a whole bunch of bottles and uh, make some altar oil. You let me know what type of altar oil you want, and I'll make it for you to save you some time. So on that note, peace and love, family. Winning!